It's the longest river on the world, in the world, at 4,000 miles long, going through difficult countries where there were two war zones. And so we, we rushed. And we just totally missed out on everything. The, we went straight past the pyramids, you know, there's a triangular thing over on the left, boom, straight past. And um, yeah, all the way down, we missed out on everything. And so for Joe to suddenly be able to get us with all the permissions to see what tourists normally can't see in the middle of the pyramids, etc., and Luxor, and all the things that we'd missed out on in our rush to get down and back to the army, was a wonderful chance. Joe, I would imagine there are quite a few challenges, because it wasn't just looking at the pyramids, was it? It's a very challenging environment on this route. I think we had more thoroughly enjoyable times than we did scary. I mean, it, you're always, you're always kind of on this trip, you're always, there's a danger everywhere and suddenly they would come out of left field. Um, like driving a very old Defender too fast on a road and something happening rather quickly and taking me off the road and things that you can't really... I, I, w I was behind Joe when he was driving down a <clears throat> straight tarmac road at 60 miles an hour in the Defender and I was behind by about 100 yards mm -hmm. And quite suddenly, this vehicle going at 60 came off the road, down into soft sand, just like that. We had to get to our destination before um, it became dark, because uh, it gets quite tricky at night in Egypt, driving in dark. And so we decided to hit this lone road in the middle of the desert, which is a single track piece of tarmac that would get us to our destination quickly. So we were doing quite, getting there um, at quite a speed. And we, a piece of equipment had got locked up on the front wheel. It was a tow rope. And it, um, it basically sent me straight off the road and nearly tipped and nearly got pretty unstuck. But Ran had always painted this thing called the black picture, which is worst case scenario that can ever happen when you're on an expedition. And I, I just thought it was one of his tests. I thought it was the black <laughs> picture. I thought he had wrapped something around it to you know, teach me what to, it's like to, to, to kill To kill my cousin. <laughs> if you can imagine you're going at 60 miles an hour mm. and your front wheel bursts, mm. the vehicle is going to go vump like that totally suddenly. And I watched this happen just ahead of me and I knew my cousin was dead. I mean, I thought my cousin <laughs> mm -hmm. was dead. Yeah. So, and I hadn't picture. planned it, no. On the upside, Joe, what, what did you find most enjoyable? Obviously, the driving sounded like it was quite sticky at points, but you had to go through um, uh, a lot of tombs. There were encounters with scorpions and dangerous animals. Mummies. It was like an Indiana Jones kind of film every day. Um, connecting with the people of Egypt is a big thing, especially in this world of division and culture and faith. So it was, it was lovely to be in a predominantly Muslim country, connecting with the people and their uh, extraordinary culture. But yeah, being spending the night in the Great Pyramid was just remarkable. I had to pinch myself. And, and the tunnels of El Minia, where they, we's, they've only just recently discovered these mummies and hundreds of tombs that they think might be the next Valley of the Kings. It was extraordinary. We were the first film crew to go in there and, and see that. And literally crawling through tunnels and coming across mummies and sarcophagi and, and lots of scorpions. Um, but I oh got every day was just just epic. I, I think it's such a shame that the few terrorists, just a few terrorists in a wonderful country where we found that the Christians and the Islam people together are just so friendly. Mm. Which, that's not the, what we get told in the newspapers. Mm. The Coptic churches, Christian churches and the Muslim mosques right next door to each other all over the place. Mm. And they're just so friendly. And you get one or two people doing terrorist stuff ruining their whole trade on tourism unnecessarily. I would encourage people just to go to Egypt. You're not going to get done in by terrorists. And it's just such a wonderful place with things that, like we've been talking about, to the mummies and so on, going back two and a half, three thousand years old, and how they chipped 80-foot figures of um, old pharaohs 80 tonnes, and they would do it with little chisels and then take them down ramps into boats on the Nile and then deliver them like sort of Amazon to people who wanted that sort of statue. Some of them up north, some of them down south. Just incredible. It's fascinating, isn't it? Because there is this whole swathe of programmes that are being made now of family members going on these voyages of self-discovery. And it's about what they discover on the trip, not just about the places they, uh, they visit, 
but about the dynamics as well. People are fascinated by family dynamics, aren't they? Well, that was a big thing about this trip. Yes, Egypt, scorpions, pyramids. But also, what I hope an audience might take away from this is that maybe there's a, a member of family for them that they could go down the pub with and listen to their legacy, their aunt, their uncle, their grandmother, their great-grandfather, to go out and really connect with your family and really glean their history and a history that might be really amazing and undiscovered. So for me, a big part of that show is connecting with your family members, whoever they might be, and get their story so you can pass that story on to your younger generation and so that that legacy lives. And just finally, obviously this is, seems like it's just the start. You seem to have got a taste for this ad adventure together. It seems. Uh, so could, could we see you going on more expeditions and, and reliving other trips? Don't know, what have you got up your sleeve, Ron? Yeah, I, I've got something up my sleeve um, and just gently and gradually I will put it over to Joe in a nice way rather than giving him a black picture like one normally does. Just no ice flows alone for 70 days with polar bears, please. <laughs> no, I keep ice right out of it.